Okay, so we already started the lecture on linear motion. On Monday we discussed um, speed and velocity and how motion is relative. And today we're going to be talking about velocity and acceleration. Excuse me, we're going to talk about acceleration and free fall. So um, I'm going to start just by making some notes and review of what we talked about on Monday. First off, speed. Speed is distance divided by time. Uh, that's the equation for speed. And we learned about two different kinds of speed, instantaneous speed and average speed. And instantaneous speed is something that um, is at the very instant. Like if you look at your speedometer or whatnot, that's giving you instantaneous speed. Average speed is um, the average of your speed over a period of time. And the, when we talk about the speed, it's equal to distance over time. That's talking about your average speed. Average speed is your total distance divided by your time period. Um, we also showed graphs. We graphed distance versus time. And when we graph distance versus time, um, we learned that the slope of that is your instantaneous speed. So at any moment in time on that plot, you can look at the slope. And that slope at that point in time is giving you that instantaneous speed at that moment in time. If you want to know your average speed, so like here, I've drawn a couple lines showing the instantaneous speed at different points. If you want to know your average speed, you're going to take the total distance and divide it by the total time. Um, comparing speed and velocity. So speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. Velocity is speed with direction. Okay. So speed is a scalar. It's just a quantity, no direction. Velocity is a vector. It's um, speed with direction. So velocity, you can also, we said speed is distance over time. You could also say that velocity is distance over time. So for example, for speed, you might say, oh, I'm going 55 miles per hour. But for velocity, you would need to say, I'm going 55 miles per hour north or whatever direction. You can also have an instantaneous velocity and instant, the same situation of instantaneous versus average applies to velocity as well as speed. Okay, so let's scroll ahead to acceleration. Um, I ended the lecture the other day on Monday at different places for different classes. So if you've already done this, you can skip ahead. Um, how can you change velocity? So there's three different ways that you can change your velocity. You can slow down, you can speed up, um, and you can turn. Those are three different ways. If you think about it when you're driving, if you if there's something that you're driving along, going a good clip, and there's an accident ahead of you and you slam on the brakes, that's gonna cause you to brake um, quickly. And when you brake quickly, your body's gonna move forward. You're gonna feel that change in velocity. Um, when, let's say you're at a stoplight and you decide that you need to like really slam, push on the pedal quickly. So if light turns green, you slam on the pedal, you slam on the gas, and you go really, really quickly all of a sudden. You're gonna feel that acceleration. Your body's gonna to wanna to move backwards. Also, if you're going around a turn, around a corner, you're gonna feel your body pulling like the opposite direction of the turn. So anytime you feel those motions, that you're feeling a change in your velocity, okay? Um, so those are three different ways that you can change your velocity. So Galileo, he um, did a bunch of experiments on acceleration. So here you can see that as a ball rolls down, we all know that the speed increases. If a ball rolls up a hill, it's going, the speed is going to decrease. But if you have a ball rolling on a flat surface with no friction, the speed will, will stay constant. There will be no change in speed. So as we just said a minute ago, acceleration involves a change in speed or a change in direction or both. So here, acceleration in equation form is a change in velocity over a time interval. Acceleration is change in velocity. You can write that as delta V divided by T. The delta means change. That's a Greek um, letter, delta. It means change. And when you write change in velocity, delta V, you always start with V2, like the second one. V2 minus V1. It's never V1 minus V2. It's always V2 minus V1. So acceleration is your change in velocity divided by your time. 
Um, so here's an example down at the bottom of the page. Your car speed, if you're driving 40 kilometers per hour and you increase your speed um, to 45 kilometers per hour, if five seconds later your speed is 45 kilometers per hour, then your change in speed would be five kilometers per hour. <clears throat> so if your change in speed is five kilometers per hour, and we put that in our equation, and our time interval is five seconds, then we would, our acceleration would be five kilometers divided by five seconds, five kilometers per hour divided by five seconds, which would be one kilometer per hour second. That means if you are constantly accelerating, every second you would be getting one kilometer per hour faster. Um, an automobile is accelerating when it is slowing down to a stop, rounding the curb at a steady speed. Both of the above or neither of the above. So this is actually both of the above. A change in speed per time is acceleration. So is slowing acceleration and change of direction is also acceleration. Acceleration and velocity are actually the same rates but for different quantities. The same when direction is not a factor or the same when an object is freely falling. So acceleration and velocity are not the same um, they're not the same when a direction is not a factor because both of them involve vectors and they're both uh, vector quantities. Um, they're not the same when an object is freely falling, so the answer is B. They're both rates but for different quantities. Um, when we plotted distance versus time, we found that um, the rate of that change in distance over time is velocity and we can do the same thing if we plot velocity versus time you'll find that the acceleration is the change in velocity over time so the rate of change for velocity over time is your acceleration so they're both rates but they're rates for different quantities so just like we found the slope for distance versus time to determine the speed or the velocity. Here on the velocity versus time plot, if you take the slope, you'll find the acceleration. Okay, acceleration and velocity are actually rates, but for different quantities. Velocity is the rate at which distance travel changes over time. And veloc acceleration is the rate at which ex velocity changes over time. Okay, Galileo. Increase the inclination of different inclined planes. You can see, we can scroll in here, and you can see he has gradually or steeper and steeper inclined planes. Now each of those photos of the ball is supposed to represent one unit of time. So you can see that here with the steep, with the least steep, we have like the first one, zero, one, two, three. Um, so you can see that each of those represent one unit in time. And you can see that the least steep one, the, over the first unit of time, the balls are relatively close together. And with the steeper, and st as you go steeper and steeper, that distance between those two units, that one unit in time, gets bigger and bigger. So you can see that uh, when it's straight up and down, the ball is getting fast, is, is separating faster, it's accelerating faster. So the fastest you can accelerate due to just gravity is um, freely falling or falling directly down, straight up and down. Galileo, he ran some experiments where he, um, it used to be, before Galileo came along, they used to believe that if you dropped a heavier object and a lighter object at the same time, that the heavier, let's say the heavier object was twice as heavy, it would fall twice as fast. Um, Galileo went on the top of the Tower of Pisa and dropped some things and did some experiments with that and discovered that that's actually not the case. Um, so. Here I'm going to show a video um, where they have a bowling ball and a feather and they're going to drop it from really high up. And first it's going to show a video of it falling um, just with air resistance. There's good, there's better, and then there's cash plus. Galileo's experiment was simple. He took a heavy object and a light one and dropped them at the same time to see which fell fastest. Hmm. 
wonder why it's not playing. So you can see that obviously with air resistance, the uh, ball drops faster than the feathers. Now we're gonna see how it falls. Now they sucked all the air out of the room and now they're dropping it with no air resistance in a vacuum. And you can see that the ball and the feathers, they're fall this is obviously is in slow motion. They're falling at the same rate. So Galileo, um, he said that without air resistance, the objects would fall obviously is true. <laughs> so. Okay, going back to the lecture notes. I'll just scroll to the right slide. Okay. So, freely falling. Freely falling is falling under the influence of gravity only with no air resistance. Freely falling objects on Earth accelerate at the rate of 10 meters per second per second, 10 meters per second squared. Um, more accurately or precisely, it's actually 9.81 meters per second squared. But in my class, since I don't allow calculators, we typically use 10 meters per second squared. Um, so any object following under the influence of gravity without any air resistance is going to fall at that rate. Now there's a lot of objects that if you drop a marble like from a couple of feet high, um, you're not really going to see the significance of air resistance. Um, so some things you can simulate that. In this class for right now, we're just going to assume that air resistance is not a factor at all. Okay, so here, the velocity acquired by an object, we have a guy standing on top of this big cliff and he's dropping an object. And so we're going to look at the speed and the acceleration of this object as it falls. So um, we're, we know that the acceleration that it's experiencing is from gravity, which is acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. And we also know that the equation for acceleration is change in velocity over time. So if we look at the starting point, when he just lets go of that ball, at that instant that he lets go of it, what's the speed of that ball? The speed of the ball right when he lets go of it is zero. Okay, now here's kind of a difficult question. Um, so we're gonna write down that the velocity is zero. Okay, now what is the acceleration of that ball the second he lets go of it? A lot of students say zero, but if you think about it, the only the ball wants to be falling down. Acceleration, the gravity is trying to pull it down. The only thing that's preventing it from falling is the guy's hands holding it up. So as soon as he removes his hand, then gravity's pulling it down. So even at that split second, right when he removes his hand, the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. Now, if you think about it, if it had zero velocity and zero acceleration, that ball would not go anywhere. It has to have acceleration to move. So at time zero, it's got a velocity of zero and it's got an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Okay, so Okay, so that's for the time zero. If you think about it, if it's accelerating at 10 meters per second, every second, then what is gonna happen? Knowing that acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, we set that equal to your change in velocity over time. And we know that the initial velocity, V1 in this case, would have been zero. And the time interval from there to the next one is one second. So when we do that, we know that 10 is equal to V2 minus zero divided by one. So, the, so therefore, the velocity would be 10 meters per second. So here at time equals one, we have a speed of or a velocity of 10 meters per second downwards and an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared downwards as well. And we know that every second, the ball is gonna be accelerating at 10 meters, it's going to be going 10 meters per second faster. So here, time equals two, 
what would the speed be? The acceleration is 10, 10 meters per second squared, so it's going to be going 10 meters per second faster. So therefore, the speed will be 20 meters per second. It's going to be 10 meters per second faster than the previous spot. And here at time equals 3 seconds, your acceleration is going to be 10 meters per second squared downwards, and your velocity will be 30 meters per second downwards. Okay, so at a particular instant, a freely falling object has a speed of 30 meters per second. Exactly one second later, its speed will be... What will the speed be one second later? We know that it's accelerating at 10 meters per second squared. And it's starting at 30 meters per second, so one second later, it's going to be going 40 meters per second. So therefore, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be 35 meters per second. It's not going to be 60 meters per second. It's going to be more than 35 meters per second. I tried to trick you there. Okay, and over that one second, what is the average velocity of the free falling object? Well, at, at the first unit of time, it was 30 meters per second. So V1 is 30 meters per second. At V2 is 40 meters per second. So what is the average? To find the average of two numbers, you just add them up, 30 plus 40, divided by 2. And so that would be 35 meters per second. Okay, And that would be going down as well. There's our answers. Free fall, how far? So we already learned one equation for acceleration. Acceleration is your change in velocity over time. Now we're going to learn a new equation for um, accel using acceleration. We know that speed or velocity is distance, the average speed or velocity is distance divided by time. We know acceleration is change in velocity over time. And here is our third equation for this chapter. We know that the distance traveled is equal to your initial velocity, which is V naught times time plus one half a acceleration times time squared. Okay, so the distance traveled depends on your initial speed times the amount of time plus one half at squared. Now, most of the time when we're using this equation, or probably all the time when we use this equation, we're going to start with an initial velocity of zero. And that simplifies this equation a lot. So if the initial velocity is zero, you can eliminate that, that first term, v naught t. And then your equation just becomes distance is equal to one half at squared. So here, under free fall, when acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, the distance fallen for one second is what? So under free fall, the acceleration is 10 meters per second. You can have acceleration rates at different, different accelerations under different things, like a fighter jet it's going to be accelerating at faster than 10 meters per second when it tries to launch off of a um, Navy ship. But here we have something freely falling. So distance is 1 half times acceleration is 10 meters per second squared times 1 second squared. That's 5 meters. At 2 seconds, it's 1 half times 10 times 2 squared, which is 20 meters. And at 3 seconds, we have 1 half times 10 times 3 squared, which is 5 times 9, which is 45 meters, and so on. So the next question, what is the distance fallen after 4 seconds for a freely falling object starting from rest? Go ahead and pause this and try to solve it. Okay, distance is v naught t, but our initial velocity is 0, so we eliminate that, plus 1 half at squared. We have 1 half times 10 times 4 squared. So that's 5 times 16, which is 80 meters. Okay, and that is the end of this lecture. We'll be going over vectors in the next lecture. Thank you for listening.